Brunner's Discovery Approach to Learning Content Outline Introduction Then what is discovery learning? What should a theory of learning specify? And the processes involved in learning. At the end of this session, you will be able to explain discovery learning in your own words and identify the processes involved in discovery learning. Introduction Hello students, we have learned two behaviorist theories, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. We have also learned one cognitivist theory that is Oswell's theory of subsumption. Today we are going to learn about yet another cognitivist theory by Jerome Bruner which is known as discovery approach to learning. Among the two cognitivist theories of Ossobel and Brunner, Ossobel focuses on concept formation in the students by the teacher and then gives a lot of emphasis on the role of the teacher in presenting the information in an organized manner. Brunner focuses on the classroom situation where a lot of knowledge is being transacted to the students but the whole process becomes so dull and boring because instead of making the students feel the excitement, the curiosity of knowledge generation, the students are just delivered the information about the product of the things which are already discovered because of which learning is so mundane a process. Brunner prescribes some steps through which learning can be made as exciting as that of a discoverer. Let us see what he has got to say about making learning an exciting one, that is the discovery approach to learning. This theory was propounded by Jerome Brunner. Just like Ossobel's theory, theory given by Brunner is also prescriptive in the sense that it says what should be done and what should not be done in a classroom situation so as to result in learning. Let us first try to understand what is discovery learning. Right from the time of the early man, learning has been an exciting experience. The early man was so curious about the nature around him and they started finding out first the fire, then the wheel and other things came up later and the whole process of learning had been an exciting experience for them and a satisfactory one at the end of producing something. But over a period of time, we have so much of knowledge which is available to be transacted. The classroom situation tends to only transact the product instead of focusing on the process of learning because of which it becomes dull and boring. Brunner wants to infuse enthusiasm and excitement into learning. So he says, let the child be placed in the position of a discoverer. Let learning be stemming out of curiosity. And let children inquire into the situation and learn on their own. Let them all learn to hypothesize and then arrive at the conclusion on their own. So he says that the students should not become passive learners or simply accept explanations given by the teachers. So they have to identify the key concepts on their own by manipulating the situation, by interacting with the environment and also with a little guidance from the teacher. This is called discovery approach to learn. Let us think of Newton who observed the phenomena around him, saw an apple falling from the tree, which made him so curious and kept him thinking, why it comes down and why it didn't go up. Similarly, feel the excitement of Archimedes, who found the principal sitting in a bathtub. These people so closely observed the natural phenomena around them out of curiosity. They in fact did interact with the environment. They tried to manipulate and 
by changing certain things they observe what changes happen even in the environment and towards the end they represented their thoughts in the form of certain laws or formulae with the help of symbols. So what is discovery learning? It is a process in which in the beginning the child interacts with the environment, manipulates the object or the phenomena around him and just sees what happens to that and then tries to find out the underlying law which is there in that particular situation and tries to represent that either through words in the form of definition or in the form of a diagram or even in the form of a formula which involves symbols. Hence, discovery approach to learning involves exploration of the situation, hypothesizing regarding whatever may be the underlying principle, then manipulating in order to experiment upon that to verify the hypothesis and then coming to a conclusion about that phenomenon by defining on the basis of experimentation and verification. Brunner said that a theory of learning should specify certain things as guidelines to the teachers. A theory of learning should specify the experiences which should be given to the learners in order to create in them a readiness to learn. It should also tell how the body of knowledge is to be structured or organized so that it can be readily understood by the learners. A theory of learning should also specify the sequence, the logical sequence in which the matter is to be presented to the child. While Oswald talks about the organization in the form of graphic organization, Brunner talks about the logical sequence in which the matter is to be presented so that it becomes logically appealing. He also talks about which kind of rewards should we be giving, which kind of punishments should be used in the process of learning so as to give direction to the thinking of children. In short, the teacher's role is only that of a facilitator. The students will be interacting with the environment, they will be manipulating on the environment and they will also be studying the phenomena. The teacher will have to supplement with explanation using a logical sequence regarding the cause and effect relationship and when the students are inquiring into the phenomena, the teacher is to give direction to their thinking using rewards and punishments. Now let us see the processes which are involved in discovery approach to learning. Activation is the first process involved in Brunner's discovery approach to learning. Activate the minds of the children by arousing curiosity. Introduce a stimulus which makes the learner explore the learning situation as an inquirer of knowledge. Arouse the child's curiosity. How can we do this? For example, we are about to teach Newton's first law of motion, inertia, let us say. Instead of starting with the theory, today we will learn the first law of motion, inertia or what is Newton's first law and go on with the definition. We should start with a situation which is known to the child but he doesn't know the law or the rules involved in that particular situation. For example, the teacher brings two eggs to the class, one a raw egg and a hard boiled egg and then rotates both on the table and asks the students which one will stop first and why. Here the children will start thinking, their curiosity is aroused but they do not know the answer. Nevertheless, they will logically try to hypothesize. So this stage is very crucial for making learning happening because unless there is curiosity, learning is not going to be exciting. Arousing curiosity about something to be learnt is half the battle won. More difficult phase is to sustain curiosity over a period of time. Here the teacher again will not be explaining or describing. The teacher will only create a set of situations with which the child will interact, manipulate and also try to hypothesize regarding the possibilities. For example, in the case of X, 
the child could see two eggs being rotated on the table, one raw egg and the other one boiled. The child observes which one comes to a halt first, notices that the hard boiled egg stops first. Now why does it stop first and why not the raw egg? The child goes on inquiring into that phenomenon through a series of questions. It is for the teacher to say yes or no or give direction to their thinking so as to lead them towards a logical conclusion and then bring them to the law of inertia which says that the raw egg rotates because the liquid within it liquid inside the egg keeps on rotating and once we halt stop that egg the liquid still in motion will make the egg rotate for a few more turns before it stops that is why the egg which stops first is the hard boiled egg and the one which stops later is the raw one this particular process of maintaining the curiosity is a challenging one for the teacher and it depends on the expertise of the teacher and the teacher will also have to keep her excitement alive so that the students also remain excited and curious. Once the curiosity is aroused and it is maintained throughout the class, the teacher should guide the students in their thinking by giving right reinforcement to the right answers or even the right questions posed by the students. Because during the step of uh, maintenance the students hypothesize and think of all possibilities and it is at this stage that the teacher has to give the right re feedback in the form of reinforcement so that their thinking is focused towards the realization of the goal that is concept attainment. Unlike Ossobel who focused on concept formation where teacher's role is very important, Brunner focused on concept attainment wherein he focused on the student's role in attaining the concepts on their own with a little guidance by the teacher. So to recapitulate, Brunner propounded the discovery approach to learning. It is prescriptive in nature. The focus is on concept attainment by the students. It involves inductive reasoning. He talks about putting the child in the place of a discoverer so that he can feel the excitement of discovering something new. This kind of learning involves several processes. The first one is activation where the child is to be made ready for learning by arousing his or her curiosity, by bringing in daily life phenomena to the classroom. And once the curiosity is aroused, then comes the phase of maintenance where the teacher should encourage children to inquire into that phenomena through this series of questions and the teacher through yes or no should be guiding their thinking so as to lead them to logical conclusion and towards the end it is defining and supplementing using logical sequence and economy in words. So the teacher's role is only that of supplementation and actual attainment of the concept is by the students themselves by interacting with the situation. Thank you.